What is up guys, welcome back to another episode of Big Pig Vision and today I'm gonna to show you how to install an eight inch hatch into the back of your kayak. This specific kayak is a Shadowcaster 123 Pro Angler. It's a little bit of a different modification is why I wanted to show you, but let's hop right in. All right, guys, before we get too far into this video, I do want to explain that I did make a review video on the Shadowcaster 123. So if you're wondering why I'm putting an 8-inch hole in the back of my kayak, then you might want to check out that video and it'll explain a little bit of why I'm doing what I'm doing. So remember, it's never a good idea to cut holes in your kayak unless you need to. So during this video, I'm going to talk about my five tips and tricks that help me make modifications to my kayak, and I hope that these will help you. Now these tips should relate to any modification that you have. So right off the bat, I'm gonna talk about number one, and that is going to be planning. Planning where modification you want, where you want it, how you want it to look, and make sure it's not gonna interfere with any other modifications you're gonna make in the, in the uh, future, or make sure it's not gonna interfere with your fishing because that's the whole reason we have these kayaks, correct? So number one is gonna be planning. All right, so jumping right in. This is an eight inch hatch that I got off from Amazon and I believe I paid $15.99 for it. Now this specific one has the red dry bag inside. We'll probably be using, utilizing that during the fishing trips, but for now we're just gonna toss it off to the side. So what this is gonna come with, and most of them will, is going to be obviously your hatch. The hardware. And this, is, uh, this particular one comes with uh, 10 screws to mount them. And uh, inside, you're going to have your dry bag, and these pop right out. So we'll set that to the side for now. And then on the underside of it is going to be a foam gasket, which we'll also be utilizing. We'll probably be using this gasket to trace out our outline before we make our cut. So the location that I chose to want my hatch is going to be in the very back of my kayak. So on this shadow caster, the issue that we're gonna run into is this has little rivet notches, if you will, that run uh, parallel to the boat. And there's also a big trench here in the middle. And we wanna put our hatch right here. And we're gonna have it opening to the back. So I went over my number one tip and that was planning. And I realized that this is where I want it. I want it to open to the back and it's not gonna interfere with any of the other modifications that I'm gonna make to this kayak. So from there, we're gonna jump into tip number two and that's going to be measure twice. I know you hear that a lot in the construction industry and anytime you're doing a home remodel. The difference between a home remodel and a kayak modification is you can go buy a new piece of wood for $2.99. So I'm gonna use the rubber gasket that it comes with as kind of my template. Now remember, the eight inch is the inner diameter of this. So you don't wanna just trace the outside of your hatch. So this inner diameter here is just gonna be fairly smaller, if not the same size as the hole that I need to be cut in my kayak. So I'm gonna lay this out. Once again, jump back to number one, plan on where I want my cut to line up with my rivets here. They're my rise, I, I don't know what you call these, but we're just gonna call them rivets. Make fun of me if you will. <laughs> so we're gonna lay this out, we're gonna trace it out with a, a chalk marker, and then we're going to make our cut. But remember, measure twice, cut once. All right, I guess this is a good time to talk about tip number three. Take your time. Take your time, make it look nice. Do the things right the first time, that way you don't have to go back through and fix mistakes. Take your time, you're doing these modifications to improve and make things easier. Don't make it harder by rushing through it and doing the wrong thing because you wanna get it done faster. Do it right the first time. All right. All 
All right, I don't know if you can see our trace line here. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go grab a tape measure. I'm gonna measure the inner diameter of my hatch and make sure that it does not, is not bigger or smaller than my cutout here. We don't want this smaller is better when we're making our cutout. We can always trim bigger, can't replace. So we're at eight and a quarter inches right there. That's what our gap needs to be. We're at eight and a quarter inch. Perfect there. It's a little shy there. So we're gonna have to just extend this line out just a little bit and uh, we'll kind of trim up as we go. But there we go. So we're going to, now we're going to cut this out and then we'll go through and trim up any edges that we run into. All right guys, so before we cut the hole out in the kayak, I do wanna go over some of the tools that I'm using for the specific modification. Obviously it's going to change depending on the modification you're doing, but for the modification I'm doing, the hatch, these are the tools that I'm gonna be utilizing today. And this kind of brings up tip number four of the five tips, and that's going to be have the right tools. There's nothing worse than getting into a project and you realizing you don't have a tool you need. One of two things are going to happen. One, you're going to go out and you're going to purchase the tool or you're going to order the tool on Amazon and it's going to take time out of your project to get that in, which means you probably will cut sh make shortcuts throughout the, the modification later. Or second, you're going to just stay at home, get something that you think will work, and now your, your project might not come out as clean as you were hoping because instead of a grinding wheel, use a Zacto knife or whatever the case may be. So just have the right tools and that kind of falls back into tip number one, planning. So as you're doing your planning, what tools may you need? So real quick, let's just kind of go over the tools that I'm using for this project. Obviously, first off, we have our drill. We're gonna need a cordless drill to drill our hole out to cut. And we obviously need our bits uh, to, to make our drill. And I have a variety of different sizes so I know that I have the right size when I need it. And then we have our cutting tool. In this instance, I'm using a jigsaw with a very short blade on it because I don't know how deep the, the well is in the back. So I don't wanna obviously go through the bottom of the kayak. And then we have a screwdriver because uh, it's never a good idea to use a power drill when putting your, your hardware in on any modification. This is obviously plastic and uh, it stresses when you put stress on it. So you're gonna pre-drill your hole and then you're just going to hand tighten these, these uh, hardware in. And then obviously I'm using the hardware with the hatch that I chose, uh, either comes with it or you're gonna wanna make sure that you go out and figure out what specific hardware you need for your modification. Don't just grab a bolt out of a storage bin you have in your garage and hope it works. Get the right one the first time. And then obviously a tape measure. Always a good idea. Make sure everything's clean, streamlined, and uh, nice and measured up properly. And then a marker obviously to mark out everything you're doing. And in this instance, I'm using two different grinding bits here. This is just a sanding bit to clean up all my edges of my cuts. And then this one right here is specifically for uh, chipping away at this plastic. It's just, think of a cheese grater on a drill head here. So I'm gonna be using this to trim up those divots or rivets or whatever I called them earlier to make that flush so we can mount it. And then last but not least, the goop. And we'll go over the goop in a little while, but whenever you're doing kayak modifications that need to go in the water or gonna any chance of getting water into it, you're gonna want some kind of silicone sealant and uh, goop is goop is my, my uh, preference. So, all right, let's go out and let's cut this hole in the kayak. All right, so now we're gonna cut out this hole. And uh, first off, obviously, we're going to need to drill an entry hole into the, uh, into the kayak here so that we can get our bit uh, for the jigsaw started. 
So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do two different holes. I'm going to do one here and one here. The reason for that is coming around these corners, I'm not sure how much clearance I'm going to have between this outside line and the side of the kayak. So if I have to re-enter, I'm going to want to be able to have another hole here to do so. Kind of connect the dots, if you will. So I'm going to go ahead and buzz through this real quick. All right, so we have our holes drilled here. And uh, as you could probably tell, I did come in from the outside line uh, quite a bit. I'm, I'm going to make my cut on the inside of this black line. Uh, and the reason for that, once again, is you can always go back through and trim up these sides. I have my grinding wheel. I can grind this out a little bit if I need to. But I just want to make sure that I'm not cutting too big. <clears throat> All right, so next we're going to take our jigsaw with our small blade here. Uh, once again, I don't know how deep this is here, so I don't want to puncture the bottom of the kayak. So I got a real small multi-purpose jigsaw blade here. And I'm just going to start from this hole and cut my way around following that inside line. So I'm going to speed it up so you guys don't have to go through the dreadness of watching me do this all slow. And there we have it. There's my cutout. Here's my hole that uh, hopefully is the perfect size. And like I said, it's real rough around the edges and I'm gonna take my grinding wheel and trim this up here in a second. So, let me grab the hatch, see if it fits down in here. Nice snug fit, I love it. And then what we're gonna do from here is we're going to open it up to make it easier here to, because it kind of bumps. So we're gonna open it up and we're gonna take our marker, our marking tool, and we're gonna come right on the side here where the rivet meets meets the, uh, the hatch. Now we're just gonna put a little mark right there on, on top of the rivet. And we're gonna do that all the way around where there's a rivet. Close our hatch, hit these ones back here. And we're not going to worry about the front ones because I think we're just going to smooth those down. You can barely see them popping out there. So we'll smooth those down. And then we lift our hatch. And now we have our mark to the outside of what needs to be grinded down. I don't know if you can see the mark on camera here, but here's a mark right here and a mark right there. So I know that this whole line right here needs to be grinded out. This needs to be grinded out. This needs to be grinded out. And then all this right here needs to be grounded out. This and this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our cutting tool. And we're going to grind these down to, to be flush with this part right here. All right. all right, so what I did is I took my little cheese grater cutting bit, if you will. I don't know the exact term of it, but it was in the uh, same aisle as my sand, uh, the sander bits for it. So... Same concept, just is more of a metal and it feels like a cheese grater, if you will. So I'm just going to use this and I'm just going to go and flatten these out and then I'll come behind with my sander and smooth them all out. All right, there we go. We got this all sanded down nice and smooth, uh, grinded down. Now we're going to take our little sander and just clean up the sides here and these edges and then uh, make sure that our hatch sits in here and seals really well. So now we're just going to take our little sand bit and carefully clean up these edges carefully. We don't want to take too much off because we have a nice tight fit already. All right, now that our kayak's all cleaned out 
and uh, you have a nice smooth edges on everything. We can go ahead and uh, see how this fits. Oh yeah, perfect, perfect fit, perfect fit. And the little bit of gap that you might see here uh, will definitely be taken care of once you get those screws in there holding it down. But all in all, all the all around perfect fit. Super excited about this. Oh yeah, it's gonna look real nice. Perfect. So uh, next we're gonna jump into how we're gonna seal this, uh, minus the screws of course. You all know that you can just throw screws in here, but I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna seal it. All right, so now we're on the final but most important step of this installation, and that is going to be to seal up our work. And uh, the way I'm gonna do that today is with this amazing goop. And uh, it's this is the plumber's edition, waterproof, temperature proof, all that fun stuff. Uh, this is just the brand that I go with. There's a lot of silicones on the market that you can use. Goop has just been what I use. So this is going to bring us to tip number five. And that is going to be, if you think you don't need the goop, you need the goop. So anytime you're doing a modification, anytime you're sc screwing something into your hall, anything that could possibly lead to elements getting inside your kayak hall, you need to use the goop. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna apply this, but that is probably the number one most important tip of today's video is you need to seal your work. Any small little drip could ruin a day of fishing. It could, it could ruin everything. If you gotta pull off to the side every two hours because your haul is full of water, you're gonna have a bad day on the water. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how we're gonna apply the goop to seal our hatch. All right, so first off, we're gonna take our hatch upside down. Remember that foam gasket we were talking about? We're gonna go ahead and pull that off real quick. We're gonna take our goop, and on the outside edge here, we're gonna put a nice, thick layer of goop. All right, that ought to do it. So there's a nice, decent sized amount of goop on the outside of that. Then we're gonna go ahead and make sure our ring's pretty clean. Any debris or anything from all our sanding and dustings off it. And we're gonna go ahead and just put that ring right back over the hatch. And we're gonna add a little bit of pressure and kind of spread all that goop out with our hands, okay? It's okay that it's leaking out the side. We'll grab a tissue here in a minute and clean it all up if necessary. All right, next we're going to lay it upside down again. And we're going to put another layer, this time on the gasket itself. And this layer is going to be pretty thick, okay? So don't be afraid to go thick. All right, nice thick line of goop all the way around. So here's the important part. When you flip this thing over and you go to stick it inside your hole, you gotta remember, this is going to be where it's placed. So if you remember the planning phase, we want our hatch to open towards the rear. So as we put it in, we're gonna make sure that this hatch is gonna flip open towards the rear. So now what we do is we just Make sure it goes in, nice and straight, and we apply our pressure, okay? So this is where you need to work kind of fast. So at this point, we're gonna grab our hardware. All right, so at this point, this is where we're gonna wanna run relatively quick through it. So what you're gonna need now is your screw gun, your screws, your hardware, and your screwdriver, okay? And what we're gonna do, is I'm not pre-drilling these holes because I want this to pull really tight. I want these screws to pull the, the kayak up onto the seal here. I wanna push it down, squish all that out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of my screws, I'm gonna take some goop, put a little bit of goop on the tip of the screw. Okay, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna go ahead, find my hole, and just get it started. 
just a little bit. Remember, we don't want to tighten it down with the drill. We want to use the screwdriver for that. So as you get that one into place, I like to do two at a time. I work two at a time, opposite sides. So we got our gun, or we got our screw, a little bit of goop on the tip. Come to the opposite side, throw a screw in there. Just get it started. We don't want to tighten it down. So now at this point, we got our two screws in. We're gonna take our screwdriver and we're gonna tighten this down, hand tight. You'll know when to stop. Same with the other side, two at a time. Perfect. And then we're gonna continue in a star-shaped pattern, just like if you're changing a tire or, you know, how that goes. All right guys, so the last thing that we need to do now is we need to fill in this little trench here. Although when we made our cut, there was a little lip there and we should be fine, but if you remember rule number five, if you don't think you need the goop, you need the goop. So we're gonna try to, or we're gonna goop this real quick, regardless if we think it's gonna leak or not. And uh, that should be the last step. And then when it's all dry, we'll come through and we'll clean up this gasket a little bit. So as you can see, the gasket's kind of been pushed out from the pressure of the screws, which is fine, it's what we want, it's sealing. So we'll come through with our little knife here and we'll trim this gasket out completely and it should give us a nice tight seal. All right, so I just went through and cut some of the gasket off, cleaned it up a little bit, scraped off some of the extra uh, goop that was on there. And uh, all we're waiting on now is just this little puddle here to dry. It's really thick, so it's gonna take a while. So yeah, as you can see, that uh, modification went real smooth, pretty easy. Just those five basic steps work for any modification. If you guys have any questions, just leave a comment down below, I'll get back to you. And if you like this kind of stuff, hit the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and follow me because we, uh, we have a lot of projects coming up with this, and I would like to bring you guys along. So that hatch plays a major role in the next video that I'm going to put out here soon, and I'm really excited for that one. We're going to be putting a trolling motor on the shadow caster so uh stay tuned for that hit the subscribe button hit that like and you can do this remember i'm proud of you